In this demonstration, I would like to talk about preparing your MARC record for import into Goldenrod, the Goldenrod version of Folio. There are some aspects that you need to know and your MARC file has to have characteristics of in order for the import to be successful in the Goldenrod version. And another reason this is important is because at this point in the development of Folio, there is not a feedback when you do an import and an import fails, there's no reporting feedback to tell you why it failed. So these are things that we've learned at Lehigh University since we've migrated to Folio and hopefully it'll help you avoid some of the pitfalls we've found. And the first is you want to make sure your file is encoded in UTF-8. And if you're not familiar with that, I have two examples and we're looking at bibliographic records right now in Mark Edit, which is a free tool that you can download on the internet and use for editing your, your Mark file. And again, most of you watching this will be familiar with that, with this tool. But if you're not, there's a link to the download page on the main page of the wiki. So right now on the left, you can see we have a record for a book called While They Sleep. And this is in Mark 8, and there's nothing that really looks obviously different about it. And the one on the right is in UTF-8. I exported both of these out of OCLC's connection tool, um, but I, I exported this one specifically to be UTF-8, which is folio friendly, and this one not to be. And if you're looking at it, just in case you don't know this, one way you can tell is you can, this little letter A in the leader tells me that it's in UTF-8 and it's Unicode encoded. Whereas on the Mark 8 record, that's value, that space is blank. So if you're looking at the record and you're not sure if you did get it in UTF-8, that will be a good indicator. Now, um, it's a good practice if you are going to be regularly importing into Folio to just set up your cataloging utilities to export automatically out in UTF-8 so you don't end up making an error and then forget why it didn't happen. So I wanted to just quickly show you in Mark Edit where you go to default your records that you save to UTF-8. And in Mark Edit, you go to Tools, Preferences, and Mark Editor. And this default encoding, you can select UTF-8 from the dropdown. And you want to check Compile Records as UTF-8. And then click Apply and OK. So what that does is if I take, say I have a record, that's in Mark 8, I can make it UTF-8. And if I go to File, Compile File into Mark, this is now UTF-8. And I save it, you just save as type should always say UTF-8. And that default that I just set up ensures that this will default to that, but I could change it if I had it wrong. Um, so you don't want this, that's not going to work. You definitely want this uh, UTF-8 and hit save. And now your file is ready to go. So any cataloging utility, uh, for example, OCLC's connection, which is a subscription service, will have uh, a way to do this. Now, uh, another place that you may run into trouble with um, in having Unicode encoded records is when you receive records from vendors. I know there's a, of at least one vendor that last I checked they only deliver them as Mark 8. But again, Mark Edit is a great tool to use to transform those into Unicode. So it's uh, no problem and it'll be, uh, everything will work with Folio if you do that. The next point on the list is, is uh, when, if you see, I'll pull up the example record. And you can see in this record, Okay, now you can see, I had to undo it. But you can see in this record, there's a 999 field with this kind of unusual first and second indicator of the lowercase f. And this is a record that came from the Folio data export app. And when you export something out of Folio, it will come with this UUID, a universally unique identifier in the record. And unfortunately, if you try to 
import this record back into Folio, it will, Folio will reject it, especially on an overlay situation. So the best thing you can do is just delete any 999 and uh, with the indicators want F and F. And if you have a large file, I just wanted to quick show you how easy it is with Mark Edit. You can just go to Tools, Add and Delete Field. And the field we want to delete is 999, but we don't want to delete all of our 999 fields because we often in libraries have local data in other 999 fields. But I would assume most of them don't have that indicator one and two of F. And so if you just fill this in and put in the field data F, F and hit Delete Field, you'll see that the 999 field that came from Folio that's causing the problems will leave and you'll have your local data remaining. The next problem I ran into that I wanted to share, so hopefully to help you avoid it, is to always have an 001 field in your record. And this came up in my experience the other day, actually. I was transforming an Mark XML record that came out of archive space and I was using Mark Edit and I transformed it to Mark format. And uh, it doesn't come with an 001 field. And normally what we, we, what we do is upload that record into OCLC and then export it from there. And with that, there would be an 001 field. But for some reason this time I didn't do it. And it was somewhat of a happy accident because I learned that uh, what it does to Folio and what it does, it makes Folio unable to export that record back out because there's no, 001 field in the mark format and it really needs it to be in there. So while it will accept it and let it import, you cannot export it back out. And uh, while I was able to fix it, there's no reason to jump through all those hoops. You just make sure you have an 001 field in your record before you import it in. So if I was going to do this one, I could easily just add here and put something in. Um, that's reasonable. Right now, Folio's import process does not take this 001 field and move it around anywhere. So it doesn't really matter what I put in there, but having an 001 field is, is very important. And the other place, because, because it doesn't export with the 001, then if you do, an, if, if your system has an incremental export nightly, so you ha have new records showing up in your online catalog. For example, at Lehigh, we use Viewfind, and there's a nightly inter incremental export. This record did not come out without the 001 field and did not show up in our catalog the next day as a result. And it also, when I tried to use the data export app and get this out, it wouldn't take it. It wouldn't let me take it out either. So just causes uh, structural problems, make it work if, um, not behave properly within the system. So always have an 001 field. The next piece that I've learned that's been helpful is validating my MARC file before I bring it in. And most cataloging utilities like this one, Mark Edit, will have some sort of MARC validation tool. So it's a good idea just to do a check. And the one, I'll give you an example of something that was causing me problems. I didn't even know it. I had an extra space right here and in my 856 field, and I didn't realize that. And if I, I kept trying to import records with this extra space and it wasn't working in Folio and I didn't know why. Well, if I had run the Mark Validator, so go to Reports and Mark Edit, go to Mark Validator, and I say, okay. It tells me, number one, it doesn't like this 555 field. But it's just a, this is a local field that we use, 555 isn't particularly for local fields, but we use it locally to make our viewfind speak to archive space. So it's just some uh, special field that we've designated for this. And it, while Folio doesn't mind having it, Mark Edit knows it's not proper usage, so, but it doesn't matter. It's the structural issues that are the problem. And that structural issue with that extra space is being reported here by Mark Edit. It's, Mark Edit is looking in certain positions for certain types of numbers and letters, and it's not seeing them. And so it says invalid field format, invalid characters, invalid, 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 and these are the errors. So I'm going to go and fix that and put take that space out. And when you're entering data manually, it's so easy, especially here, I, um, the spacing is somewhat hard for me to see sometimes, so I, I can mess that up. So I rely on the mark validator at this point to tell me. And right now, this is the only one, and, and I know because I tried it in my test environment that um, it does import into Folio with that particular mark error. 
So then I'm going to save it. And that brings me to my very last point is to check the encoding again. But what I really mean by that is when you're ready to save a file, make sure you compile it into Mark and have, make sure your drop down menu type is UTF-8. And I'm just going to call it save. So hopefully that will help you prepare your file and avoid some errors.